Hello and welcome to an introductory jungle guide for Season 8. This is going to be part 1 of a 3 part series on getting started in the jungle. In this video we're going to go over the 4 main classes of junglers focusing on their strengths, weaknesses, when to pick them, what runes and items to build, and several examples covering everything that we're going to talk about. Let's jump right into it. Assassins are the best class of junglers when it comes to picking off targets when they least suspect it. That's pretty much what they're known for as in this example where Braum is recalling thinking that he's safe when a Shaco comes out of nowhere and kills him. And it's not just about low HP targets. They're the best when it comes to bursting down squishy champions from full health as in this example where Rengar bursts down Jinx as she's distracted with chasing Syndra. Given the high amount of damage that they deal from the very beginning of the game, assassins are also the best counter junglers as they can bully bruisers, carries and tanks out of the jungle very easily in the early game. In this example, Nidalee bullies Ramis off his rep buff, takes it for herself, then proceeds to bully him off the crux. Assassins usually have very high mobility and when you combine this with their high damage output at all stages of the game, they're able to play very aggressively with little risk. This essentially makes them the best snowballing junglers in the game. One of the downsides to playing an assassin is that virtually none of them have an intuitive jungle clear. And in the cases of champions such as Nidalee, the clear itself can be quite complex. Assassins are heavily dependent on snowballing an early lead and closing out the game. Failing that, there is always the option to pick off squishy opponents much later in the game and push 5 vs 4. What makes a good assassin is knowing precisely when to go in. Do it right and you get an advantage for your team as in this example where Eve finds the perfect moment to attack Zera. Do it wrong and you will pay for it dearly as in this example where Nidalee gets caught invading the enemy jungle by a blitzcrank and she gets blown up immediately. Assassins are not a beginner friendly class of junglers and take a fair bit of time and effort to master. Be prepared to put a lot of time into learning any given assassin if you're serious about picking them up. Now when should you pick an assassin? If you are confident in your ability to snowball multiple lanes and suppress the enemy jungler, then by all means you can pick them at any time. However, if you are not so confident, it's best that you only pick them when you have a frontline tank or bruiser to work with because you are absolutely going to need that frontline if it goes to the late game. Now let's talk about runes and itemization for assassins. You're going to be focused on killing squishy champions and finishing off low HP targets. Your keystone will always be electrocute as it has high base damage and scales well with damage items. You will want to take sudden impact because you probably have a dash in your kit and this will make your targets less durable. You'll also want coup de gras for helping with finishing off low HP targets. For itemization, you'll want to go warriors or runic echoes. Take the red smite upgrade if you want a mini exhaust combined with smite, take the blue smite upgrade if you want to slow down opponents and improve your ganks. After that, if you are an AD assassin, you can build pretty much anything that comes from a long sword. Prioritize lethality items for killing enemy carries and be sure to get a Tia mat if you're struggling with your jungle clears. In terms of defenses, be sure to pick up at least one of these hybrid defensive items that combine durability with damage. If you're playing an AP assassin, your itemization essentially resembles an AP carry. This includes the Zonyas and a Banshees as defensive items for when you need to survive. Here are a few examples of these runes and items on assassins. In this first example, we've got Kha'Zix running the Electrocute Keystone with a few damage items along with the Guardian Angel to protect his lead. As the teamfight begins, he engages on Jarvan triggering Electrocute before backing out as Akali comes in. Jarvan dies towards him and Kha'Zix uses all the damage items that he's built to take down Jarvan. Afterwards, Yasuo is going to engage with his ultimate, bursting through most of Kha'Zix's health and Yasuo does succeed in taking him down. Except the Guardian Angel is going to kick in, reviving Kha'Zix, and by that time, most of the blue team has been wiped out. Similarly, in this next example, Elise is running Electrocute with Leandris for improved damage against squishy targets, and she's carrying Azonias and Banshees for improved survivability. She opens up this fight by unloading her abilities, taking down Vayne with the help of Electrocute. The team fight carries over into the mid lane where she chases down the enemy Heimerdinger. Heimer tries to retaliate with some spells, but Banshee's Veil successfully blocks some of the damage and she takes down Heimerdinger as well. Carry junglers are the best late game duelists and can take out most champions. They are heavily reliant on itemization to deal any damage which makes them weak in the early game in exchange for the strong late game. Here we see an example of what happens when one of these champions reaches full itemization. A 6 item jungle jax goes on a rampage against the enemy team wiping out their lead and charging towards the nexus. Their early game ganks tend to be mediocre as they are prone to getting kited and don't have the crowd control that they need to make ganks work, as in this example where Trendemir ganked the bottom lane with Mocking Shout and is not able to get anything done. 
They are instead heavily dependent upon their allies to provide crowd control as in this example where Orn sees his Renekton just long enough for Trendermere to get in there and secure the kill. They also have very strong counter ganking capabilities as they can use the enemy team's aggression to get better positioning to kill opponents. As in this example where Shivana is able to use the aggression of the enemy jungler to pull off a counter gank that kills Eve. Despite their high damage output when they get ahead, they are easily taken down by crowd control as in this example where Jax gets hit with a charm and this allows Jarvan and Zarath to blow him up instantly. This is why it's important to enter the fight after the enemy team has used their crowd control as in this example where Jax enters the fight after the enemy team has engaged on Nasus. A better use of their strengths will be split pushing as their strong duelist nature will allow them to kill most defenders that come to stop their push. As in this example where a late game Master Yi is split pushing the top lane and he takes down the solo lane Nasus that comes to stop him. Unlike the other classes of junglers, a carry jungler's damage output comes primarily from their auto attacks which have no cooldowns. What this means is that they can take down multiple opponents in a skirmish if they get ahead as in this example where a fed Trindamir chases down and kills Kassadin then spins over to take down Ezreal and Italy in quick succession. In general, a carry jungler who's fallen behind will be unable to recover and be useful, as in this example where Master Yi's fallen behind but tries to go for a gank on the mid lane anyway with the help of Fiddlesticks. Unable to deal enough damage, both of them end up dying. Given the poor early game combined with the inability to come back from falling behind, this is not an effective class of junglers. As a side note, the range variety of auto attack based carry junglers do exist and they can be functionally played as a marksman in the jungle. Now when should you pick an auto attack based carry jungler? As a general rule, never pick a carry jungler when your lanes lack crowd control. If you have a top lane Teemo, a mid lane Vlad, and a support Soraka, it's probably not the best time to pick Master Yi. Look to pick carry junglers alongside heavy CC tanks such as Orn or Maokai as they can make your ganks work. Similarly, look for champions like Karma, Lulu, and Zillion to give you improved mobility in teamfights so that you can avoid getting kited. Now let's talk about runes and itemization for carry junglers. The best keystone by far is press the attack for improving your damage with successive auto attacks. You'll get the most mileage out of this keystone against tanks and bruisers as squishy champions tend to die too fast before you get much out of it. In this example, Jin and Ari died way too fast but press the attack does expose Jarvan and Orn increasing the amount of damage that they take. There is also an alternative in fleet footwork if you're building crit as it doubles as a source of healing and improved mobility which will help you stay on top of targets. In this example, fleet footwork heals Trendemir multiple times and allows him to keep up with Cassidy and Ezreal in Italy as he chases them down. There's also Dark Harvest if you're looking to power farm and get some bursts on your first attack against opponents. The main value of this burst is that it refreshes every time you kill a target. In this example, a late game Master Yi uses a power farm Dark Harvest to take down enemy champions and uses every reset to apply the Dark Harvest burst to subsequent targets, wiping out the entire enemy team. The Glacial Augment Keystone applies to slow to targets, improving the quality of your ganks. In this example, Shivana makes up for the poor quality of her ganks by using Glacial Augment to slow the enemy Trendomir, allowing Teemo to come in range to ignite him, securing the kill on Trend. This is one of the best ways to make carry junglers work in lanes that have no crowd control. The Alacrity Rune is never a bad choice on carry junglers as more attack speed is always welcome. Other considerations include perfect timing as it grants you a free stopwatch that you can put towards the Guardian Angel much later in the game, not to mention the perk of having a free Zonyas in early game teamfights. Lastly, given the late game nature of carry junglers, Gathering Storm is extremely strong if and only if you find that your games regularly go past the 30 minute mark as it provides a massive amount of free damage. Now let's talk about itemization. Your jungle item of choice should always be a Red Smite Blood Razor or Warrior for improved dueling capabilities. Your damage itemization typically builds out of these items here depending on what you scale with. As an example for Trindamere, you might pair an Infinity Edge and Phantom Dancer with your Blood Razor. As Jax, you might pick up a Trinity Force and Blade of the Ruined King. As Kale, you might pick up Nasher's Tooth and Gunsu's Rage Blade. For improved survivability in teamfights, consider picking up hybrid defensive itemization like Guardian Angel and Scimitar. And for pure defense, if you're expecting to stay in melee range of the enemy team for a long time, pick up a few tank items though you'll be transitioning to more of a bruiser role by going this route. Let's take a look at some of these runes and itemization in action. In this example, Shivana is running press the attack with a bunch of durability itemization and finds herself at the center of a lengthy teamfight. The items that she's built allows her to survive to the end while the combination of press the attack and blood razor help her take down the opponents around her. In this example, Morgana runs into Kale who's carrying a Blood Razor and Nasher's Tooth with the mid-game Gathering Storm. Kale kills her sister very quickly. In this example, Master Yi is running a ton of on-hit itemization on a glass cannon build. He enters the team fight after the initial round of abilities have been blown, allowing him to take down multiple members of the enemy team with no threat of crowd control to take him down. 
Timing his entry into the teamfight was crucial for making this work. In this example, a Dark Harvest Ezreal has to watch his positioning carefully as he picks off members of the enemy team. Every time he kills an opponent, he's able to fire a Dark Harvest enhanced attack against the next target. He uses the effects of Dark Harvest effectively to clean up the teamfight for a quadra kill. Bruiser junglers have the best combination of durability and damage amongst all jungle classes. While they generally have very strong ganks, they don't quite have the damage output of assassins and depend on allies to some degree in the early game to make ganks work. They're also great at picking off low health targets as they have high base damages and the durability needed to pull off tower dives. Their greatest strength lies in the flexibility of their itemization. They can build full damage to play like an assassin killing enemy carries instantly, or build tanky to play like a tank tanking damage for their team while their carries deal damage. Both approaches have their downsides. A full damage bruiser is great at instantly killing squishy targets, however they lack the ability to tank damage and can be blown up very quickly by opponents in return. A heavy durability bruiser is great at tanking damage but they will never be strong in single combat and will always be defeated by heavy damage bruiser builds. Additionally, despite the fact that they can be built tanky, a bruiser is not a replacement for a true tank. A tank has abilities that make them inherently tankier without depending exclusively on itemization. Bruisers depend exclusively on itemization and that makes them weaker at tanking damage. There is also a subclass of bruisers who have built in sustain. They have the unique benefit in that durability itemization is much more effective on them than usual and they cannot be assassinated during the mid to late game even if they fall behind early on. Now you might be wondering when should I pick a bruiser jungler? The answer is anytime you want as the ability of a bruiser to go tanky or full damage allows them to fit into any team composition based on what your team needs. Now let's talk about runes and itemization. If you are a bruiser who deals damage by chaining abilities together, you should always take Electrocute. If you are a bruiser who deals damage primarily through auto attacks, you should always take Press the Attack. Other runes to consider are Sudden Impact if you have a dash in your kit, along with Coup de Gras for killing low health targets. Consider picking up Revitalize if you have Sustain in your kit as it will improve your survivability. If you plan on building tanky, do consider picking up Conditioning as it will make you tankier along with Triumph to restore a large amount of health every time you help your team secure a kill. Now let's talk about itemization. Your choice in items ranges from full durability to damage along with a myriad of options in between. If you want to be tanky, pick up Cinderhulk and at least one offensive item like Black Cleaver followed by stacking Armor, Health, and Magic Resist. If you decide to go full damage, consider picking up Warrior and anything that builds from a Longsword or BF Sword. Lastly, if your name is Lee Sin, pick up a Tracker's Knife, otherwise just take the Red Smite upgrade. As a general rule, when behind, always build durability itemization. Now let's take a look at some of these runes and items at work. In this first example, we have a full attack damage Jarvan with Electrocute. As he strolls up the river, he runs into the enemy Misfortune who chose the wrong time to run ahead of her support. Jarvan throws his flag, dashes to it, then ults her, killing her instantly. Note the fact that Jarvan's team already has a frontline tank in the form of a top lane Maokai. That is why Jarvan can afford to go this build and try to be the one who carries his team. In this example, we have Warwick combining Revitalize with durability itemization. Warwick's improved healing allows him to overcome Lysandra and Kine's combined burst damage and he takes down Lysandra. The amount of time Kine has to spend to take down Warwick gets him killed in turn by Talon. In this example, we have a full tank Jarvan with Black Cleaver as his only damage item. That's the only damage item that he's going to need as his goal is to lock down opponents so that his carries can deal damage. He does not have to be the one carrying this game. Take note that his team would not have a frontline tank if he did not go this build. That's why it's a good idea to build tanky this game. In this example, a press the attack Zen Zhao who's fallen behind builds hybrid offensive itemization to capitalize on a sustain allowing him to overcome the fed eve on the enemy team. A bruiser with built-in sustain cannot be assassinated once they have a few items. Tank junglers are the most valuable class of junglers in a team fight as they can act as a frontline for their team and CC anyone that tries to get past them. Tanks usually come with abilities and passives that make them inherently tanky. Purchase durability items on top of this and the results can be quite obnoxious. First and foremost, a tank's job is to tank damage for their team. As in this example where Sejuani dives over a wall to gank the enemy Syndra, tanking 6 tower shots allowing Malzahar to secure the kill. This is how tanks are meant to be played. Most tanks have some form of hard crowd control. These crowd control abilities should always be used to disrupt the damage of whoever is carrying the enemy team allowing your carries to kill those targets. 
As in this example where the enemy Camille dives onto Zyra only to get interrupted by a twisted advance from Maokai who proceeds to lock her down while Zyra kills Camille. Tanks typically have strong ganking capabilities at level 3 and this only gets stronger at level 6. Given how strong their ganks are, tanks should spend more time ganking and less time farming the jungle. The greatest weakness of tank junglers is that they are prone to getting counter jungled as they have the weakest early game survivability. Both assassins and bruisers can bully tanks out of their own jungle very easily. Luckily, they have strong recovery capabilities as they build the same durability items whether ahead or behind and simply have to CC an opponent to do their job. As in this example where the Ramus that lost his topside jungle to Nidalee can flash taunt the enemy Vlad to secure a kill for his team. Now you might be wondering, when would be a good time to play a tank? The answer is, when everyone else on your team wants to play a carry, you should probably play a tank so that you have a front line. So if you've got a top lane Riven, a mid lane Yasuo, and an AD carry Vayne, and you can't dodge because you're in your promos, it might be a good time to play Maokai. Now let's take a look at runes and itemization for tanks. If you are a tank with any kind of hard crowd control, always take Aftershock as it's a source of damage and durability that scales with your health. And if you don't have crowd control, just take Guardian and make the most of it. Since you're going to take a lot of damage, always take Conditioning to improve your durability for mid to late game teamfights and do take Triumph as the amount of health that it restores will increase as you build more and more health. Since you're going to be in the front line, you will probably get hit with a ton of crowd control abilities. Consider picking up the Tenacity Rune as it will improve your mobility in teamfights. Now let's talk about tank itemization. As a starting point, always build Cinder Hulk on tanks. Go Skirmishers if you want more damage, Stalkers if you want help with your ganks, and Tracker Snipe if you want more vision. After that, virtually all of your items will be defensive in nature, but some of these items actually have offensive uses. If you have high base damages, you can use Righteous Glory to close the gap to a target. You can also build Tormail and Abyssal Scepter to improve the amount of damage that you deal to opponents as they attack you. And of course, you have a large selection of durability items to choose from whether you want to tank damage or play a more support-oriented role. Now let's take a look at some of these runes and items in action. In this first example, we have Sejuani in the midst of a battle with the enemy team. She's tanking a fair bit of damage and drops low on health and has to back out. She's running straight health items with the Warmogs. She's able to get away with doing this because she gets an absurd amount of armor and magic resist from her passive alone. The Warmog's armor regenerates her health back up and she's ready to go in for another round. And this time she locks down the enemy AD carry and takes him down. In this example, we have Ramus running Thornmail with Aftershock. He catches the enemy Yasuo and taunts him. Yasuo ends up killing himself by attacking Ramus. In this example, we have Dr. Mundo running Guardian with tank itemization. He comes in to help his bottom lane and the Guardian Keystone kicks in, granting a shield that saves Quinn's life as Mundo charges forward. Thanks to the save from the Guardian shield, Quinn is able to come back into the fight and pick off the enemy Caitlyn. In this next example, we have Shen running Aftershock and Conditioning. He taunts the enemy Sona under tower, giving himself a boost of durability to tank tower shots during which he kills Sona and gets away safely. Now you don't necessarily have to follow this itemization. Tanks do in fact have AP and AD ratios that you can take advantage of. But do take note of this. A full tank Maokai has a very large margin of error. As he engages on Caitlyn, he makes a number of mistakes, but he's still able to kill her quite easily. On the other hand, an AP Amumu cannot afford to make a mistake, because if he does, he will get burst down very quickly, as in this example where he misses his bandage toss and gets taken down by Caitlyn. Now I know that was a lot to digest, so here is a quick summary. Pick an assassin when you have a solid front line and look to make picks on enemy targets. Time your aggressive plays carefully so you don't get blown up and pick your runes and items to reflect the burst damage nature of your kit. Pick carry junglers when you have lanes with crowd control. Enter teamfights after your opponents have used their CC and watch your entry into teamfights and try to split push when possible. Take runes and items that work well with melee ranged auto attacks. Pick Bruiser Junglers anytime you want and adjust your build for more durability or damage based on what your team needs. Take runes and items that scale well with burst or auto attacks based on the nature of your kit. Take Tank Junglers when everyone else wants to play a carry. Focus on tanking damage for your team and CC the enemy carries. Take runes and items that scale well with crowd control and durability. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to the channel, follow on Twitter, and check out the video links on either side. Leave a comment about the kind of content you'd like to see in future videos, and check out the Patreon link if you'd like to support this channel directly.